Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at the 5 day precipitation and temperature as it's reasonably dry over the next 5 days, potentially some precipitation towards the weekend but it's pretty chilly for quite a few with below average temperatures and that looks like it's going to be continuing into next week as well and then we'll have a look at the mid to long range, have a look at the various computer models as again dry weather does look like it's going to be staying around for quite a period potentially a little bit of a breakdown maybe 10 days beyond but it's such uncertain time frame that we can't say anything with uh, uh with any definitive proof at this stage um but it does also as I said look pretty chilly as well with quite cold north to northeasterly flows nothing crazy because uh, of course it is coming to the start of may but it is generally chilly uh, and colder than average just remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So do start on the live radar, you can see over the UK right now, there is no precipitation really, uh, maybe some light drizzle here or there and some thicker cloud, but on the precipitation radar there is nothing at all, all the precipitation is out towards Europe with the cut-off lows that we have been talking about over the course of the last few videos that have pushed into the UK a little bit over the last few days, bringing some precipitation here or there, but nothing too crazy, and they're just continually spiring around southeastern and southwestern parts of Europe with heavy showers and thunderstorms. We also have some much cold air spilling into Scandinavia, and we're seeing some heavy snow there. Again, not too unusual, being uh, still in spring, but still uh, it's very interesting seeing heavy snowfall up in Norway, Sweden and Finland. As I said for the UK, it is really quite dry at the moment, but temperatures are down as we do have quite a lot uh, of thick cloud around. Now if we do have a look at those temperatures, you'll see they are very much cooler than they have been over the last few days. Not too much yellow on this chart. Yellow and orange is sim symbolic of mid to high teens, very little of that. A lot of blues mixing in, especially in the east and the northeast. Best conditions widely are across western parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland, a little bit across southwestern parts of Scotland, just to the south of Glasgow, and again in some valleys as well, being sheltered from the wind and less cloud. But across the northeast, um, in the southeast of Scotland, it is pretty chilly indeed. Temperatures struggling around 8, 9 degrees. Elsewhere, even into the Midlands, East Anglia, southeast into London, through the whole of central southern England, a lot of these little blue patches showing, which is around 10 to 12 degrees. Pretty chilly indeed. Yes, some yellow uh, appearing in some places, meaning temperatures rising a little bit into maybe 13, 14 degrees. But you can see France is in a similar sort of air mass to us, but it's a lot, lot warmer, especially even northern France, which is very much in the same air mass as us in parts of Belgium, Netherlands, but it's because of the cloud. And you can see it very distinctly across Netherlands and Belgium, though that temperature gradient as you get towards the coast with more of that mist and fog and lower cloud coming in off the North Sea. And that's what we're seeing in many eastern areas at the moment. Again, the best temperatures really, as I said, in western areas. We are seeing some decent temperatures perhaps in western parts of Wales. And again, this small region up in northwest England. Just again because of the orographics with the hills on the eastern side of northwest England, meaning we get the fern effect. Um, so again, in around the Liverpool, Formby, Southport, into St. Helens, Wigan, Manchester, these areas, it's really quite pleasant and most likely seeing quite a lot of sunshine as well. Again, that's because all the mist and the cloud is getting trapped of the um, peak district or trapped eastwards of the peak district with those cooler temperatures. And we're just seeing sort of microclimate um, take over. And this is one of these scenarios where it's very difficult to say exactly what, what regions are going to see um, different sort of conditions because you just go 50 miles eastwards and it's pretty miserable and cloudy. But you go 50 miles westwards into Liverpool, Manchester sort of area. It's very nice and pleasant. So that's why sometimes uh, it is very difficult to forecast these sort of situations where we do see these sort of easterly winds, northeasterly winds that, that, that can bring in from very miserable conditions for some. So, if we now have a look at the UK Met Office run, you can see earlier this morning there has been a decent amount of cloud, and that has continued through the day. So, around this afternoon, sort of with peak temperatures, um, you can see quite a lot of mist and cloud around. Again, it's very difficult to model this cloud um, in even just a few hours, uh, because there is so many small different things, like oreographics, that can change the dynamics. Um, again, 
best in the west and you can see further eastward there is some patches here not showing that much cloud but feeding in from that north sea mist and murk there it is keeping those temperatures down significantly and that's going to continue tomorrow you can see more cloud around in the morning and even in the afternoon quite a lot of mist and murk hardly any cloud breaks really there so it's not looking particularly great and for the early hours of friday uh, again when we do see those cloud breaks though overnight we will see frost as we'll have a look at those temperatures in a minute but through friday we do see those temperatures um potentially rising a little bit higher with more uh we will sort of less cloud around but we do see um some more showers potentially popping up across northern england and scotland and by friday evening into early hours of saturday we start to see the potential for a little bit of precipitation with a weather front moving in from the far north west um parts of scotland seeing some more heavier precipitation maybe northern ireland ireland but it does drift southwards through saturday evening into sunday and gives a little bit of rain and thicker cloud for all it is this small little pesky low stress system that we'll have a look at in a minute on the uh, on the mid-range charts looking at the gfs and various models and you can see it's nothing too crazy but it could give a bit of rain a much needed rain for some regions if you have a look at those max temperatures though you can see early this morning a frost for quite a few where we saw those clearer skies over the course of the afternoon you can see again those peak temperatures in parts of western ireland 15 to 17 degrees again northwest england you can see 13 degrees there being a little bit higher in actual fact and in the far southwest maybe 14 15 degrees but elsewhere widely sort of 8 9 10 maybe 12 or 13 in a few spots now that continues for overnight tonight those temperatures will drop away and wherever we see clear skies in the west midlands wales north england southern scotland a frost will develop and even some areas which are showing two or three degrees if we do see those cloud breaks we could see again a frost there as the sun rises though it will bring those temperatures up significantly but tomorrow afternoon again it doesn't look amazing maybe the far south coast 16 17 degrees but much further north uh, further northwards it doesn't look great 9 10 11 degrees that bullseye position in northwest england doesn't look like it's going to be quite as favorable tomorrow perhaps only 8 or 9 10 degrees perhaps as that wind flows more of a northerly so taking away that easterly edge um and you can see generally the south is best um, and western parts of Ireland. So Western Ireland could be quite nice over the next few days. If we do have a look through Thursday evening, you see temperatures do drop again in a few spots, and by Friday afternoon, once again, 14, 15, 16 degrees, temperatures a couple degrees upwards. Again, those peak areas being the best, seeing those best temperatures, northwest England, southwest England, and into parts of Ireland. Through Saturday, potentially a bit of a frost again in a few spots, not uh, not quite as cold on some of them, but more widely down into low single digits. But by Saturday afternoon, quite widely, 14 to 16 degrees as those winds die down a little bit we see a slightly warmer air mass and that's because we see that low pressure system arrive from the north introducing a little bit milder air in off the atlantic um uh, uh, not from the north seen in from the arctic so again it might be a bit cloudy and there might be a bit of rain around but those temperatures will be up and when we see some dry weather some sh sunshine it will get up to potentially 16 17 degrees and that will continue into sunday potentially again 16 17 degrees in a few spots with, but with thicker cloud around and that precipitation still hanging and lingering perhaps nine or ten degrees in a few spots and again that continues through to monday cloud mounts making a massive massive difference so if you do now have a look at the uh gfs gm and east F, look at the mid to long range and then we'll have a look at the ensembles as well now you can see we do have high pressure over the top of the uk and that's why it is largely dry but if you look at the ice bars it's generally coming in from east to northeasterly direction again you have a look at the united kingdom look those ice bars coming in from the north sea cooling uh with cooling uh, temperatures there and that's why it's quite chilly at the moment that will continue over the coming days for the ice bars do sort of um do sort of stretch out a little bit more towards the weekends potentially um and we do see that little low pressure system move in by saturday that's going to give that enhanced precipitation into the far northwest it does move through high pressure does come back in but we start to see more of a northerly flow into the start of next week chillier air mass potentially coming in there before another low pressure slides in we again see a general north to north easterly flow and this is this colder arctic air spilling out into the mid latitudes towards the uk and this is where we could see even more enhance frost towards next week so continually looking pretty cold and dry perhaps a little bit milder weather on the weekend but yeah next week does look like it's returning back to this chillier um, and drier weather 
Beyond that, high pressure does topple back in, and it could start to turn a little bit better with a bit more of an easterly flow. Easterly flow is not too bad, but right towards the end of the run, low pressure is running in off the Atlantic and could turn to things milder, but it could be turning quite miserable as well with heavy precipitation. Now, if we do run back and have a look at the air mass, you can see pretty chilly, chilly air masses at the moment. As we head towards the weekend, a bit milder air does come in from the west for a period of time before we see chilly and northerly air flows come in again and a properly cold minus 5 degree hours of foam gets through for next sort of Thursday and Friday. Other runs have it a little bit earlier than that and as we'll see in a minute, GFS is a little bit of an anomaly with this developing of the low. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And beyond that, generally stay pretty chilly before high pressure does build back in. Likely to see a bit of an inversion there with a big diurnal range, potentially high teens in the day, but much colder at night. And as we head towards 384 hours, you can see milder and colder sectors in the Atlantic with a lot of low pressure. So do you have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Pair. Again, high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment within north northeasterly flow. As we head towards the weekend, you see that low pressure move through, and then we go into a northerly flow, chilly, cold air masses spread through under the higher pressure, turning things very uh, cold at night, especially but quite chilly in the day as well, with frost around overnight. For day 10, we just stay under the high pressure, quite chilly and frosty. If we do run it back again and have a look at those 850 HPA temperatures, chilly at the moment, and as we see that high pressure moves out more towards Greenland, and we see that low pressure plunging through Scandinavia, bringing that colder air masses towards the UK, especially the eastern side of the UK. Pretty cold there, and as towards day 10, we do see high pressure returning with a little bit of a milder air mass, but it will still feel probably a little bit chilly. If you do, again, right back, just have a look at the temperature deviation as well, because, of course, that doesn't look amaz amazingly cold. But if you have a look at the deviations, you'll see it is much, much colder than average. As you can see, we're getting down to sort of minus four to six, if not below that, uh, below that uh, for the average this time of year. We're staying generally quite a lot in the blues until day 10, perhaps some yellows and some mild and average conditions start moving back in. If we do have a look at the ECM at WF, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment. We do start to pull in. A bit more of a northerly flow towards Monday. You can see that low pressure plunging through into northwest Europe. A proper northeasterly wind. It would be very chilly and breezy with that. Really quite cold indeed. If we have a look at the United Kingdom look, you can see the strong northeasterly flow. Again, exact positioning of the low will make a bit of a difference. If we see these ice bars squeeze up a bit more, it could create an even chillier wind chill, even colder wind chill with that. We continue with this northeasterly flow for the end of the week. It does sort of fade away towards next weekend and if we do run it back and have a look at the 850 hpa temperatures and then we'll have a look at the deviation as well as uh, in a minute you can see chilly cold air spilling out of the arctic very cold indeed through the uk um, look at that minus five line down most areas really cold indeed we have a look at the united kingdom look very chilly indeed um, and we just yeah, run it on to early hours of Friday, just put on those 2 meter temperatures, again, 2 degrees quite widely, 1 or 2 degrees quite widely, and again, this is from a quite a low resolution model, so locally it will be much colder than that, maybe minus 1, minus 2 degrees, and again, these areas are showing 2, 3 degrees, and not like frost hollows, these are city centres, sort of East Anglia, the southeast of England, so very cold conditions could be coming next week, but it all depends on how much that cold air mass we do get through, and again, if we have a look at that temperature deviation, you can see really quite cold indeed, with real big blues moving through the UK, um, especially real cold air just to our east we do miss out on it further westwards but the eastern side of the uk gets this real cold minus eight to minus 10 degrees below average really really chilly indeed but if we do run and have a look at the ensemble we'll see what they're showing again they are still a little bit split towards um uh, for the first week of may uh, chilly at the moment turning a little bit milder towards this weekend as that low pressure system does come in and that means why well that's why we're seeing that little bit of rise in temperatures and then towards the start of next week for the first couple of days of may colder than average by a couple of degrees but nothing too crazy then returns to around average before we could see that real cold air mass coming from the northeast a little bit of uncertainty with that others staying around average slightly above average but probably half to two thirds going just below average or well below average and you can see the operational GFS run there going really cold indeed along with the control and quite a few other ensemble members so there's a bit of a split still 
some more precipitation, especially in the longer term, perhaps um, showing that it, it that more low pressure is going to be involved but it still does generally look dry over the next 10 days for quite a period um and yeah it does a lot there's a lot of split in the long term some very colder runs some much milder runs if we do have a look at the ecm wf ensemble we'll see what they're showing again um cold at the moment turning to around average uh and over the coming days and then returning well below average for the first few days of may and then returns around the 4th 5th of may to average before we do see a plunge from again around a half of the ensembles including the operational and the control run so very interesting seeing both the control and operational from the gfs and ecmgf going for this real cold but the low resolution on summer members not so much so it'll be interesting to see which one wins out in this sort of case and generally the ECMGF ensembles are around or maybe slightly below average for the foreseeable future and again enhanced precipitation potentially in the longer term and again that's something we do need to keep an eye on but it's not in the next sort of seven days so a lot of stuff can change so it does generally look like it's going to continue to be quite dry it's going to be chilly over the coming days warming up a little bit towards the weekend before turning potentially colder once again for the first couple of days of may and then it does come quite uncertain we could trend even chillier than that down to down to similar high temperatures we have now but even colder nights or we could trend a little bit milder one thing we do have to take into account is every single day the sun is getting longer uh, the sun strength is getting um, stronger the sun is getting much stronger um, the daylight -like hours are getting longer so it's getting even harder to get frosts and it uh, sort of the sun strength will warm up the day um, even uh, just a little bit every single day that we pass so it's likely that even a minus five degree isotherm moving in in a week or two time would give conditions that uh, well, similar conditions to than if a minus one line was through at the moment so even though yes it does look like maybe a much colder air mass could be moving through the end, by the end of next week it's not going to be that much drastically different to what we have now perhaps colder with the frosts but in the daytime temperatures probably not much lower than sort of eight nine ten degrees so not amazingly cold but much chillier than i think a lot of people would be like uh, would like this time of year of course overnight frost make sure you take precautions if you have got plants out in the garden that are sensitive to cold weather as there is likely to be a frost where you are over the coming week whether it's tonight um, or whether it's in a couple of days time or whether it's next week quite a few areas are going to be seeing, seeing temperatures touch freezing and they will do it around sort of 2 3 a.m it's not going to be real frosty when you wake up could be frost in a few areas but by the time most people wake up the sun will start to be rising and will thaw everything very quickly so there could be damage done overnight that uh, that is difficult to spot so please do take the necessary precautions and of course do stay safe if there are sort of icy stretches out and you are out late at night or early in the morning so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon